Okay, then my little sweetheart. Where can I say hello? There we are. There we are, darling. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to come over this side. And I will use one of these today. Because someone is a little bit deaf and a little bit blind. Bring that down a bit. There we go. Good girl. You are a good girl. Hey all, welcome back to the channel. And this is one beautiful cocker spaniel called Dotty. As I mentioned, she is a little bit old, which means she's a bit she's a bit blind, a bit deaf, and a little bit shaky on those legs, which is not ideal. I'm not gonna lie, it does present a slight challenge when it comes to grooming her. But you know what? We can manage. As long as she's happy, I'm going to be happy too. Now, let's rewind the clock and delve into the rich history of Cocker Spaniels. They originate in England, where they were initially bred to flush out game birds, particularly woodcocks, hence their name. And this is why they would have the certain trim that they would. The breed standard for the Cocker Spaniel, which I kind of went for that sort of vibe here for Dotty, but it's kind of difficult to do when... Um, and you've got a dog which is, is trying to sit down and stuff like that. So we did what the best we could. But if, if she was a little bit younger, she would 100% suit a proper breed standard groom. So what do I mean by that? Basically, because of their jobs in the past when they would have to flush out the woodcock in the, in the undergrowth where there was lots of shrubs and thorns and thistles and stuff that would get caught up in them, they would have a nice skirt line and furnishings off the back of their legs and feathering's there. And this would help stop their, their bodies and legs getting injured because everyone would get caught up in the hair when you could pull it out and then they were good to go again rather than hurting themselves. They traditionally have their tails docked because, again, that was something that could get caught somewhere. And then what you do is you trim the top of their heads off and the top third of their ears to get the nice elongated look. And it really does look fantastic. When working with dogs like Dottie, it's important to remember that she's probably not got 100% of an idea of what's going on. So you've got to just reassure her at all times. Keep her hand on her. Let her know she's safe. And that is what I try to do throughout. But to be honest, Dottie is actually incredibly well behaved. It does present a challenge, which you will see in just a short moment when I'm trying to trim those legs because they do shake a bit. But when I'm doing things such as clipping her nails, I'll always support her weight with my own hand and arms because this will just make life a little easier for her. And then with my clippers and my 7F blade, I started to carry out that beautiful trim on her. Now, I'm going to tell you something that might surprise you. There is a reason Spaniels have those long pendulous ears, those floppy things of joy. And that is because when they were initially bred and working, those ears would actually flap the scent towards their nose, which was very sensitive. And then they would know which way they were going, slash which way they needed to go. That's just awesome, isn't it? That is so cool, that. And dogs' ears can also flap scent into their nose. They're not just for hearing, not just for hearing. They've got multiple uses fantastic now spaniels can be one exciting animal to keep they're not just like any other dog they have a bundle of energy and they want to be the life of the party they have got so much they want to do i bet but if you were spaniel owners out there you know that when you're out and about they're aiming for the mud they're aiming for the puddles they're aiming to have a good time every time apart from mine actually she's very lazy now Here's one challenge when it came to trimming, trimming Dotty here, trying to trim those legs because as you can see, they're a bit all over the place. So just, it was kind of a job here to just make them suitable. I didn't want to get too close with the blades because that would cause an issue, but we did want to leave some sort of featherings. And now we're entering the zone of those final touches. We're just getting those clippers over our head to, to elongate the ears because we'll also trim the top parts of our ears too, like I mentioned earlier. And I tell you what, she really pulls it off. You're going to see her right now looking like a beautiful queen. I mean, you tell me. She looked like a beautiful queen, I think so. And because she has done such a good job, because it's not easy for her, I just had to spend that time to let her know she's been an absolute babe. If you've enjoyed this one, please like, comment and subscribe because it would really mean the world.